mind and doubt. Mind is doubt. Mind is always in dilemma and full of questions and inquiries. And in that it never receives the answers. Each moment existence comes to you as answers to many unasked questions. With how and why mind comes in. Mind wants to know everything. It asks all sort of questions, raises inquiries, then it is impossible to satisfy the mind. Because one question is answered, mind will create 1000 other questions. And this process goes on endlessly. Mind is versatile. It can create doubt and questions in every field, even in spirituality. Many meditators ask why we are not doing meditation. Are we going in the right direction in meditation? Questions like these. Simple solution to all these questions is to look who is asking these questions. Remember, simple solution to all these questions is to look who is asking these questions. The moment we start answering these questions from mind, we have become food. It is indeed impossible to answer them. No question can be answered. Only questioning mind can be answered. And the moment this questioning mind is answered, it is silenced, it attains to serenity. Malininga Putta was one of Buddha's disciples. Once he told Buddha, I ask you, not because I doubt you, but because I doubt myself. I ask you not because I doubt what you say, but because I doubt whether I have understood it rightly or not. I ask not because I doubt your achievements. Instead I ask because I doubt my footsteps. And the journey is very long and the dream so vast. I have doubts about my own footsteps. I ask you so that my trust gets strengthened. I ask you so that my trust becomes profound. Mind seeks prayers. Certainly prayer is the way to open the doors to the heart. However, prayer becomes ritual in most of the cases. When you look at the Hindus, Christians, Muslims, their prayers are simply a formality, a ritual. It happened once with Nanak. The chief of the Muslims asked him that you say there is no difference between a Hindu God and Christian God. Today is Friday. Let us go and offer prayers in the mosque. Nanak said there is no problem. A large crowd gathered. Hindus thought that Nanak got insane or what, that he is going to the mosque to pray. Muslims rejoiced that at least the man of the caliber of Nanak is coming to the mosque. At least he has joined the fold. This is what happens when people change the religion. One day someone asked Mulla Nasruddin, what would you say if a Hindu turns Muslim? He says, certainly he has got sense. He will be saved now because he has come to the Muslim faith. That is the only faith. And then he heard that one of the person from his community, the Muslim, went to Hindu temple and joined the Hindu religion. So the person asked, what would you say to that person? 
he has changed his religion from Islam to Hinduism. He says certainly he will have to go in hell because he changed the religion of Allah and gone to the idol worshippers. He must be thrown into hell. The matter is the same, conversion of the religion. When people change from other folds into your religion, you rejoice. And when people from your fold change into other religion, it is a complaint, a lament. So Nanak said, there is no problem, I will go to the mosque and offer prayers only if you offer the prayers. The man said, what is this condition? I am already going to the prayer, to the mosque. So when the time came, Nanak went. He stood behind the chief. The chief continued his ritualistic prayer. But Nanak did not do anything. He just remained standing. The man was angry. Out of anger, how can you pray? Somehow or the other, the prayer finished. The man turned towards Nanak and said, You told me that you are going to offer the prayers. Nanak reminded him that he had told him he will offer the prayers only if he offers. The man said, Everybody is a witness that I was offering my prayers. Nanak said, That does not matter to me. I was seeing you. You were buying horses in Kabul. How can you pray in that state? Your mind was not there into the prayers. The man got bemused. Then he said, confess, one of his, the best horse had died and he was wondering how to go to Kabul to buy a horse like that. And Nanak said that the person who was leading you in prayers, he was cutting his crop in the fields. In that state there can be no prayers. They were doing prayer as a ritual, but a ritual is not a prayer. We go to our churches, temples and mosques and offer prayers as a ritual. So the chief, the imam confessed that the crop was ready, there was a shortage of labor. He was wondering how to get the labor to get the crop cut and this is the part of his prayer. Prayer becomes a ritual. Also prayer becomes the way of asking. Prayer is not flowing in with harmony with all that is. Instead prayer becomes a ritual and a way of asking. If an inquiry is without prayer, then it is initiated more by your doubts and not created by the search. In such case, the inquiry is not for the sake of the search, it is to raise more doubts. One who has set out only to doubt, his doubting becomes unhealthy, it is sick. And it is not that someone who opens his doors with a prayerful heart loses the right to doubt. In fact, only he has the right to doubt because he has opened the doors of his heart with a prayerful heart. Now, the doubt is only a part of the longing for solution. In that case, doubt is creative, not destructive. Now, doubt is only a way. Now, doubt is only to find a way to remove all hurdles along the way. And the questions are there to get close to the answers. Now the inquiry is not the game of a diseased mind. Now this doubt is not the disease of a sick mind. Instead, it is now the search for a healthy person. Trustful doubt, these words appear to be very contradictory. Trustful doubt, 
But if we try to understand them from a different angle, it will be clear. Try to understand what is trustful doubt. Even when we trust, normally our mind is full of doubts. Even we, if we put our trust in someone, it is full of doubts. Doubt always remains as the undercurrent. In fact, we trust only because inside there is doubt and we want to suppress it. So the trust is nothing else but suppression of your doubts. And when doubt is inside and trust is on the surface, then trust will be weak. A slight wind and your trust has shattered because the inner is more powerful than the outer. The outer is superficial and feeble. That which is on the periphery will be weak and that which is at the center of the heart will be powerful. So doubt is inside and trust is just imposed on the outside like clothes, outer garb. Just as clothes do not eliminate your nakedness, they simply hide it. Similarly, trust imposed on the outside, like clothes, does not destroy your doubt. Instead, it only hides. The opposite is also possible, what I call trustful doubt. Trust is there in the heart. Doubt is only on the circumference. Trust in sight and doubt on the cir circumference. That doubt becomes the part of the journey to strengthen your trust. Because how can someone who has not doubted trust, but actually he is full of trust deep within. In this, the example of the disciple of Buddha, Molining the Putta is very important. He have deep trust within, but on the surface there are doubts. And these doubts are about his own capabilities. One day he told Buddha that when I ask you questions, it is not because I doubt you. Instead, I ask you because I doubt myself. This is why when Anand was reporting the scriptures of Buddha, he said, Thus I have heard. This phrase, Thus I have heard, is very significant. Maybe I may have heard wrong. Maybe my cognition was not right. So he is not expressing the certainty about it. He said, Thus I have heard. All the Buddhist scriptures begin with, thus I have heard. So Moliniga Putta said, I ask you not because I doubt what you say. I ask you because I doubt whether I have understood it rightly or not. Because the words when they are spoken, they are pointing towards something. And we pay attention to the words, not what it is meant. There is a vast difference between your level of understanding and that of the Master. In case of the Master, the words emanate from deep silence. And these words that are emanating out of silence are being received in the clatter of the mind. Because your mind is noise. Then you will like to give your own interpretation to the words. And unless you have the experience of a particular word, you will not be able to dramatize that word. This is why when an author writes a novel or a play or a story of a movie, and when it is actually going into the movie making, the words are dramatized. There is a vast difference between the word and its dramatization. Certain things 
like for instance gestures when i am speaking to you there is a gesture that gesture is also important the intonation the gap between the words how i pronounce a particular word what emphasis do i put on to a particular word all these things are important to convey what i want to communicate to you but when these are received in the clutter of the mind all these things are lost when the same word when it is spoken in a two dimensional or three dimensional effect the video effect it has a lot more effect then many times even the authors who have composed these stories like even the person who wrote the very widely known the movies they will make changes they always become the consultant when the movie is being produced the director is producing the movie and when he sees a particular part of his script he wants to create more effect into it and that comes through the video effects through the gestures through the sound effect through other things this is called the art of dramatization so when i am speaking if you are listening to my words you can feel the dramatization of that and if you can see it as a visual the video then you can see the gestures in a three dimensional effect the words will be otherwise you will interpret the words in the light of your own experience a person who has not experienced a word who has not experienced the reality of the word chair or table when this word is spoken this will sound to him like an empty word meaningless because he has not experienced chair or table when a master uses particular word he is speaking from his realm of knowing his realm of awakening and you have not been exposed to that those words are not your reality so you will not be able to understand molininga putta said i ask you not because i doubt what you say but because i doubt whether i have understood it rightly or not because as such i am concerned i do not have the experience realization of what you have when you are using the word you are using out of your realization that i lack in me so slowly and slowly along with the words there comes the gap and when you start falling in those gaps those gaps create groups in your consciousness to visualize what does the master mean when he uses the particular word when he suddenly gets silence there is a gap between the two words sometimes there is an emphasis on the words and this is what is important i ask not because i doubt your achievement i ask because i doubt my footsteps and the journey is very long and the dream is so vast now this is the way a disciple should ask the questions not out of curiosity i have doubts about my own footsteps i ask you so that my trust gets strengthened i ask you so that my trust becomes profound in one of the books on jalaluddin rumi the person who wrote the introduction he has mentioned something this person is from australia a research scholar from canberra there is something mystical in these compositions of jalaluddin rumi this is what i had written and then the what has been mentioned by dr wiser sent there is something mystical in these compositions of jalaluddin rumi for which i have no words to explain 
However, certainly there is something. Through these compositions and meditations, Tao Sha Buddha has created such level of beauty through the use and mastery of the musical rhythms and rhymes. So with play of the words, he creates musical rhymes and rhythms that the reader and the listener not only can appreciate the wisdom contained in these compositions, but also reach levels of ecstasy and mystical energy that is seldom found in other such compositions. Certainly, these connect you to your being. Tao Sho Buddha calls these as meditations or marappa. The mastery of rhyme and rhythm is such that very often he creates a new vocabulary using the same old word yet creating new feelings that are associated with the insights of Rumi. Furthermore, often he has such mastery of play on the words or at other times he uses the same word with a different accent or vowel twice or even thrice in the same composition with a different meaning each time. One cannot help but marvel at the linguistic mastery that Tao Sha Buddha displays through various compositions and meditations that he has created. One can simply drown in the essence of it and thus get connected to your being. In any case, the end result is the same. The experience of artistic beauty of these compositions, voice modulations, rhythm and ecstatic energy, and alpha brainwave patterns all combined together with the mental understanding of the wisdom conveyed takes the listener to the state of meditation. This is as close as one can get to the mystical experience itself without actually being present in the company of the master. This is the way master uses. So when Malininga Putta is asking, he is not doubting the capabilities of Buddha, instead he is doubting his own understanding. And this is the trustful doubt or the positive aspect of doubt. But your doubt is always negative. Whenever one asks prayerfully, the doors of his heart are open. And when the doors are open, the message reaches. He does not come with doubt. Instead, he comes with a question. There is an inquiry. Questions can have answers, but doubts can have no answer. Because someone who wants to doubt will go on doubting every answer you give him. Doubt is an infinite regression. You give an answer, he doubts it. You give another answer, that too he doubts. Doubt is his basic premise. Whether you say, he doubts it. Then there is no way. But if doubt is only a part of search, just a methodology, a method, not an end, not a solution, not a goal. If doubt is not a premise but inquiry, doubt can be helpful and it is the way along the spiritual path.